coming. My name is Leon. I'm one of the organizers of Creative Crew. I organize with uh, Linus over there. Yeah. Um, so I like say we hold our talks here in the in Tobio Library every second Tuesday of the month, and it's a variety of topics. Right. So today we are gonna we did a we did a, a talk last January. Uh, in 2016, January, we did uh, getting started with 3D printing. So this, uh, we sort of like, like to, we are thinking of this year to take uh, some of the topics that we done last year and sort of like expand a bit on it. Like So now we're going to do stories in 3D printing. So instead of talking about the 3D printing uh, process, how it's done and everything, we're going to talk about what people actually do with their 3D printers and what they have made. So, okay, so about me. Uh, basically, I'm a I like to think of myself as a three different kind of person. I am a designer. That's how I think got involved in Creative Group. Right, Creative Group started off as a official Adobe user group, and since then we have changed to do other stuff as well. So I do Photoshop, Illustrator, and I do bit of photography. Uh, I do write a bit of software, and I'm a maker engineer. And I do a lot of electronics stuff. So I do I play a lot of Arduinos, I do woodworking and I do a bit of uh, laser cutting. So the question is, I'm primarily a, a electronic maker. I don't do stuff like uh, what Anyang does, right? I, I don't model stuff to make props and uh, make models. Why did I ever think of getting into 3D printing? Right? Because electronics. How many of you do electronics? Okay, yeah. So, okay, honestly, you see, I'm still not sure why I went to 3D printing. Okay. Um, it's kind of a, it's kind of a very weird story that because um, I mean the whole maker scene, uh, a lot of people, a lot of my maker uh, friends, they do electronics and stuff, and there's a lot of 3D printing that you see happen in in all the maker fairs and all the make, in maker group shows and stuff. So I was curious to see. Um, to try out myself, right? So I bought a 3D printer, a uh, very simple 3D printer, very small one. Um, partially to support my friend who sells 3D printing stuff. And it only prints 10 by 10 by 10 cm. You know, it's, you think about it, it's actually really, really small. So I paid about 1,000 for this printer. And uh, basically, it, I only use, to date, I only use uh, one cup of filament and one cup of color. But after buying this and using my 3D printer for a while, I'm actually very new to this 3D printing thing. Uh, when I did give the talk last year in January, I only used it for a month. So I only bought the 3D printer in this end of December 2015. So I'm basically like a year and three months into doing 3D printing. And um, my conclusion is that I don't know how I'm actually not able to do all my makeup projects without this because it has solved so many uh, problems as a maker. Okay. So like I was, I was saying, uh, my approach to 3D printing is a bit different from what Hanyang and uh, they are doing over there. <coughs> right. So what I'm going to show you is something that things that look uh, very rectangular. Okay. So what this was the first project that I did with a 3D printer and it was from this project that I started to realize that the 3D printer offers me so much uh, possibility. So this part is okay. So where are the 3D printing printer part? You have here the the pivot, right? You have a stand here for the motor. You have this this uh, small little um, arm for you for this another 3D printer arm to actually move it. So. Uh, before 3D printing, there's actually no way to actually create this project. Right? To me, I always had this problem. I, I needed a way to shake the liquid. Right? And then you, you start thinking of how am I going to make a contraption and so many stuff. But when, it's 3D, when you have this, it's so simple. It's like you, as you are printing stuff, you need a certain height, you just print a certain height. You need it, this certain length, you just print a certain length. You don't have to go and source to find, oh, where am I going to find a piece of, of uh, something which is actually this long and fits into an arm like this, 
and I need to raise the motor like this amount of height so that it can, it, there's enough space for it to move up and down. So the 3D printer solves all this problem immediately because you want any height, you want any size, you can do it. So it's after this project that I realized that hmm, actually I can do a lot of stuff with this thing. Right? And yeah, so as it went on, uh, uh, my mom suddenly realized that oh, a 3D printer can do a lot of things as well. And you can do things like this, you start organizing stuff, you start doing shelving. Like these are 3D printed joints. Like um, they are, this is MDF board, you cut it up, you just put them together, you start organizing uh, everything around your area as well. This is another very simple idea which solved a lot of problems for me. So basically in my shop, Every day we have to count all those coins, right? And every a lot of people what they do is they packet it and do all sorts of stuff. But this is actually a very simple way. You 3D print exactly 10 coins, you just put it in. So like now I want to count how many there are, like one, two, three, thirty-three coins. Okay. So every day we have to go and we have to we make accounting a lot, lot faster. And um, this is uh, my latest thing that I'm doing. So. What this is, let me show the next slide first. So you see that's a that's a laser light. <coughs> okay, that actually just draws a line, which for the longest time also I, I thought if I had a laser light I could draw this line, I don't have to. It's very easy for me to measure a straight line across this piece of paper. And I had a problem actually finding a way to attach to to the surface. And um, the latest thing that I've tried is that you can actually use magnets. So this is a example. So 3D printer here, two magnets, and you can actually just magnetize and this holds onto any surface you want. So 3D printing doesn't have to be just 3D printer alone. You can combine with a lot of other things. So magnets is one of them, puts onto the surface. So this part here, uh, actually, this underneath area, so we actually just magnet and tie and hold the laser light. So all these were, you know, you think of uh, laser cutting and CNC, all that. They can't actually create this kind of a uh, structure for you. Right. So my current project is that um, something like that. <coughs> that I just showed you um, over here. So that you can see it, uh, it's actually quite simple. So to attach the magnet, you just super glue it in and it holds very well. So this goes on the bottom and we have a whole circuit board here as well. And this is a, this is not magnetic, but you can actually create a hook like this, put it in, then you hold on to here. So there's no way you can actually find a hook to actually hold a circuit board like this. So this solves all this kind of problem that it has to be. Okay, this is actually the underneath. You see this area, right? It's actually underneath there. So there's very, very little space. So you need to create, uh, you need the board to actually be exactly this size within here and a hook that actually holds it and is strong enough. This actually won't fall off really. So, yeah, so that's the circuit board. And one of the things that I did last year, this is actually, a, this is actually my largest project to date. Um, it's about, this whole area here is about 3 meter long. This is all wood. And it's held by 3D printer box. It's about this high. 3 meter long and it's all held by 3D printer box. Uh, the reason why is because if I were to actually do like how everybody else in the exhibition does it, you screw everything in, right? You take a very long time and you have to, there's a lot of work to do to screw it. And then when you have to take out, you have to take a very long time to take everything out. But this whole thing is, this whole structure is actually only held by 3D printer parts like this. So let me show you the inside. <coughs> so it's just like that and it clicks on and then you have a second piece of wood. Okay, so this, this structure alone is actually just what holds it all together. 
So inside, like this. So these are the two wood by the side. You can see in between, you just snap all this on together. Uh, when, I actually tried, when I actually thought of this idea, I didn't think it was going to be strong enough. But it's actually very strong. Because what happens is, after that, there are like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know about that. Quite a lot. Uh. So what happens is that when you actually push it, right, the, the force uh, is, is distributed across all the parts. So it doesn't actually fall down, it doesn't break. Um, you see also inside here, this is a video. Um, and how and there's a monitor in there. Right, so how do you attach a monitor onto a piece of wood? That was also a, a, a challenge. So what I did was very simple is that at the bottom here, you just 3D print something that's a right angle. Okay, so you just print a right angle kind of a, a rest. You put the, the monitor on top, right? And then after that, on the two sides, you have another another piece of like a S shape like this that holds it on the two sides. And then and then finally, what you do is that you print this this uh this structure here. So you can see that you just this two little part. But what you do is that you can combine three D printer parts with whole lot of other stuff. So this, two dollars from Daiso, right? Put it in. This forms a very strong loop. Put another one at the bottom, right? Like this. Then you velcro it on. Then when these two are screwed on, because we use screws, it's very strong. This actually holds the whole construction on the Wood itself. So 3D printing, you know, this kind of a, this kind of an idea before 3D print, before I got my 3D printer, it's like I wouldn't even have thought about something like that. But it's like, oh, I just need a bar. I got this. Just velcro it on. So from a maker's perspective, whether you're doing for electronics, doing for woodworking, it actually does so many weird stuff. So even here, you see this light here, right? Um, so how do I get the light there? Is that Behind there's an LED, but you 3D print a kind of a, a white, small little structure to just this one to actually allow the light to shine through. Right. Uh, what else is that? This part here is also 3D printed. So in order to hold the LED lights into the wood, you actually print this. I don't have the structure. So basically, it's just a kind of a square piece with a protruding hole. So it's a, you can actually drill a hole in the wood, and then this 3D part can actually protrude out to the other side, and then you screw it back on. So this gives you the area to actually come out of the wood, uh, and then you can actually lay the LED on top. So uh, so many of these these things, and now uh, like I tweeted at the end, right, that this project had 192 3D printed parts, all joined together to form one. Big interactive display. So it combines electronics and a lot of stuff. This actually, for those who know my electronics, this is run on the Raspberry Pi. This area is actually what it actually does is that when you touch here, right, this video will change to this product. You touch here, it will show you how this product is made. So it's actually one big interactive wall. Um, so yeah. And yeah, that's about really all I have. Everything that I actually done is all done with uh, just one software, Fusion 360. This was the only uh, software that I ever learned. So, okay, let me just talk a little bit about this guy which I just did last night. Right, um, what is good about why 3D printing helps a lot is that all these small little things, you see this is actually not square but actually triangular. Yeah, all this is all factored into the design so that when you actually try to snap it in like this, right? You can see. So by having it at an angle, it's easier to go in. So all these kind of small little changes you can change. And you, you just print one. The first one I print, obviously I made it square. It was uh, not really good then. Slowly, I just modify and modify, and uh, 
I think several versions of this and I get to a very good uh, design then after that you can just print this out and you of course you add stuff like always remember that you can add stuff like screws and anything right by so magnets and they all combine together with the 3D printing process to actually create into a much larger project so uh, yeah that's my presentation on uh, how I use 3D printing as a maker. Uh, anyone have any questions? I'm going to give more time to the awesome people here. Yeah, I'm sure everyone came for the BB-8, right? Yes. No one's interested in the three of us. We just want to see the BB-8, right? Yeah. Anyway, um, I have my. Yeah. What kind of you use for this kind of stuff? Inferior. You mean the percentage, is it? For which one? This one? Uh? 20%? I think the one for the wood, this one is only 30%. Yeah, in fact, all of this one I mean, uh, is layer height 0 0.3. Uh. So, uh, it doesn't look, need to look nice. Uh, but, yeah, you guys can take a look at it later because it's actually, it was actually a lot stronger than I thought. Yeah, even the people who, uh, who were do working, they're like, oh, it's actually host. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else have any question? Yeah, I have all these. Uh, I'll put this. <coughs> yeah, you guys can look at it later. Uh, 